The spirit of Detroit. Tube! Like, comment, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. Click the bell icon button. This is where I'm at. I'm telling you right now, this is where I'm at. This is what I believe. You've seen the poster. You've seen it. And I wasn't even capping that. I should have put this out on Monday, but I actually work. I actually have a life. Most YouTubers, I don't know if they actually have this stuff going on. I'm not door dashing. Let's just say that. Um, shout out to you, your likes, your comments, your subscriptions. All those things are doing well. They're, they're, uh, I'm happy to earn your subscription if you're new here. I know I have a lot of new subscribers coming in. and I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Uh, giving me viewership, liking the videos and everything. But we are the kings of the North. And we not only the kings of the North, but we are the kings of the NFL. I have to say, I have to say, this is probably the best team I've seen in a decade in, uh, in, in terms of the Lions. Um, the league is taking note. Stephen A is taking note. Remember last year around this time, Stephen A, um, Said we were horrible, a joke, and all this other stuff. It was last year. I put the clip in there. I had a video where he was just talking so bad about the city and the, and the organization. And then two years ago, um, uh, Ernest Dickens, or whatever his name is, Ernest Dickerson, right? He did a video talking about you know how great Stafford was and, and that we were a horrible organization. Not anymore. We the Kings of North. <laughs> we the kings of the NFL. There's only five teams that are able to call themselves the kings of the NFL right now. There's only five teams. Miami, you can put Baltimore in there, but we're up there. San Francisco and the Eagles, we are up there, though. And I feel like there is some teams that are going to creep up to the top as time goes on. We know there's a lot of teams that are going to like win the last eight games of the season and save their season and everything. But as far as like the dominant performances we're putting up, we're seventh in defense, second in offense, third overall, you know what I'm saying? Five, <laughs> uh, fourth in points scored, 11th in points allowed. Um, this team is just not, not 11th, like, no, at the bottom, like, we're not giving up any points for real. Um, and we got dudes getting PFF scores that are great. You know, we got we got uh, 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 Panay Suell, Aiden Hutchinson, Campbell. Like, there's so many players on this team that are knocking stuff out. Amon Ra, Jameer Gibbs. I just feel like I'm unprepared in 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 giving credence and credos to everybody in the in the NFL about this team. This team is very good. This team is very strong. And I, I look forward to us to dominate. When we went to Tampa Bay and they had a similar team to what we had in 2014. You know, they weren't run Tampa Bay just reminded me of that Stafford esque Lions team where they can't run the ball but they can throw it everywhere and they got talented receivers and that does not hold up at all that does not hold a candle to these the physically dominant detroit lions like that that cannot i looked at that game and i saw seven different things there was when i went to carolina game when i went to that game i'll, I'll get touch on that in a bit but when i went to see uh detroit lions when i turn this on and just seen tampa i seen the detroit lions of the past versus the detroit lions now like the Detroit Lions of the past are going to, you know, they're going to come out with their throwbacks on. They're going to look nice and they're going to throw the ball everywhere and they're not going to try to run the ball. They're going to be one dimensional. They're going to have their quarterback in all types of spots uh, that makes him look bad. Like it was just a Stafford era versus this new Detroit Lions team. Like Tampa Bay is going to be a good team, but they're not built for a playoff run. They're not built to go on the road to Philadelphia in the playoffs. They're not built for that. The Lions are. The Detroit Lions are. You got JMO who's going to open up things for Amon Ra. You got uh you got <laughs> you got uh Amon Ra who's going to open up things for JMO and you got Reynolds in there with perfect glue guy. Um, I feel like the ballers are balling on this team. We have a lot of ballers. Now, what, what I would say about the injuries, especially, you know, when it comes down to our running back, 
Like, honestly, man, when I went to Carolina, I really started when I went to the Carolina game. Sorry. I really started understanding this team really like fully like they don't care, bro. They have stars and they have glue guys and all this other stuff. But I feel like this Lions team is really built just in terms of the depth and just in terms of the offensive line. The only star players on this team is the offensive line. Because how do you define a star, right? Someone you can't replace. How do you define a star? Someone you can't do without, like, for long periods of time. Like, like someone who's a game changer. Like, this team without Panay Sewell is a bad team. You know, I don't want to see them without Panay Sewell. I don't want to see them without, you know, I don't want to see them without that offensive line attack. Because without Amon Ra, we can still get off. We can st- Golf can get off. Without... You know, Jamison Williams for six weeks, we can still uh, lead the league in scoring. You know, without, you know, without a running back, we can still run the ball. It's going to be a little more pedestrian than we would like, but we can still run the ball. And I guess in a weird way, what I'm trying to say is that the Lions are unfazed, you know, when they get these injuries, right? Like, I know there are some people in YouTube or whatever, Detroit Lions fans, whatever they call themselves, that want to trade for Brian Burns and want to trade for all these star players. And we have guys, we just put guys in. A lot of this team is just next man up. Mello Fowle played great through through Branch's injury. Like, Harris played exceptional through Branch's injury. Like, there's some guys that are just stepping up, showing out, and those are our glue guys that are going to be on the cheap for the next year. So when I look at this team, I'm not looking at star, 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 star. Because when you start looking at star, 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 then you start having issues trying to pay people. You know, you understand you understand what I'm saying? Like the Eagles in four years are not gonna be the same Eagles because they can't pay everybody, right? We got journeyman guys, young talent, glue guys, everybody is contributing at a high level. Everybody has a role. I don't need to target Jamison Williams a thousand times because he's my deep threat. He just has that role on my team. Even though he's super talented, I picked him 12. He just has that role that Devery Henderson, that 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 Brandon Cooks, that 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 deep that Tariq Hill, he has that role, but I don't need to target him like he's a star. Like, I feel like this team is, like, so balanced with these guys that are rah-rah guys, practice squad guys, guy, veteran guys that I don't identify nobody as a star. We can say golf is the star or the face of the franchise, but I think more than ever is Panay Suel is the face of the franchise. Like, I just see this team as, like, this team is going to be very good for a long time, and the leagues don't notice, man. The league is on notice. Everybody's on notice. I think what happens is, is that we're getting like national attention, national media attention. Are we winning on the road? Yes, we're perfect on the road this season. Are we winning? Um, are we winning tight games? Yes. Are we playing top tier talent? Now we're not playing top tier quarterback talent, but we are playing in prime time. We are playing great. And when we face Lamar, that will give us more validity as a defense. And say what you want about Lamar. I know you you guys don't like Lamar because of other reasons, Uh, not reasons that are based on football or statistics or anything valuable. And, And kudos to you. But if you beat the Ravens, who have seen a Super Bowl and are rated one of the best teams in the league, you will get more respect. Okay, the bandwagon will be more open. Okay, like I know that Baltimore is not having a great team, having a great season, right? I know that, but but despite the internal issues with the wide receivers, Bateman and the offense and the injuries, they are still managing to plug away and win, right? But we have the same situation and we are managing to plug away and win. So when I see the depth chart, I'm not even scared of the injury report anymore. I'm not scared of like golf throwing the ball 20 yards anymore. I'm not scared because I know my team's going to be prepared. They're going to be well coached. They're going to be together. They're going to be focused and they're going to have the talent and the grit guys 
the the catalyst guys on the field and and make it work somehow. Oh, you don't have JMO this week? All right, Khalif Raymond, we got a package for you. Like I feel like everybody on this team has a role and a purpose. I remember the days where we would ask ourselves, why is Hawkinson here? Why is Ebron here? Why is Pettigrew here? No, Laporta is like literally rating the best tight end right now, like in the league. Like I would ask myself legitimately, why is Nate Burleson here? And we have guys on this team, on this version of Detroit Lions that are proving their roles. Craig Reynolds, all these guys like Aquara, like everybody's just proving themselves and doing what they're supposed to do. And I don't even feel Branch being gone. Like, it's crazy, right? Like, you know, back in the day when the one lion got hurt and that was a good player, it was over. If Kevin Jones got hurt, like, say what you want to say about Kevin Jones. But when Kevin Jones got hurt, y'all wasn't running the ball no more. <laughs> like, Branch's injury should have been catastrophic, right? Should have been, oh, no. It was, oh, no, for us. But it was not, oh, no, for the regime, this team. It wasn't, oh, no, for the defense. We are still a top 10 defense in the league. So I just feel very confident heading into the next portions of the seasons. I'm actually so confident, I don't even know what to talk about. <laughs> like, think about that. Like, I have no criticism. Like, that's all the Detroit Lions YouTube people live for is criticism. If I did nitpick and this, that, and the third, it would be stupid. Like, oh, we had 353 on the, in the air. I wish we had 400 to call it elite. That would be dumb. <laughs> you have 353 and three touchdowns. So why would I nitpick on that? So I'm feeling very confident about the team. I see that we can really rise. And shout out to Golf, man, because Golf really proved something to me last game where he can, like, when the running game's not working, when the system's not working, the play call was atrocious in my mind. But he, sir, he like, even though we had control of the game because of the defense, he he finished that game out. He got key third downs when we needed it. He got key third and longs. He converted on third and long. He went deep when he was supposed to. He read the right keys. He read the defense. He picked apart. And he, he said, look, when this falls apart, this running, running the ball is falling apart, I got you. There was literally a penalty that we had, and he had to throw again on third and long and threw a touchdown. Like, there's no point in saying this guy is elite-ish. There's no point in getting around it. In this system, golf is elite, and when he plays his best football, it's because of the people around him. Now, I think that, of course, I'm not a golf historian, but it's the same way it was in L.A., it's literally the same way, but he's gotten better. He's gotten smarter. He's made better decisions, and he's grown within the system. I'm not going to say he's a system guy, but I will say that um, he's rose to the occasion significantly. So I really like where this team is headed. I like where Jared Goff is headed. Do I feel bad for like Hendon Hooker and other people? Yeah, I feel bad. But at the end of the day, I know this team is in good hands with Dan Campbell, with with with. Um, the whole regime. I can't even name one person, bro. I'm just so excited. But uh, like, comment, subscribe. Love y'all.